Today we're going to be talking about a game I never thought I'd be talking about, at least here in 2023. Uh, it, it's a game that's been on Switch every single year since the beginning and hasn't really had any notable updates in a long time until now. But these notable updates, I think, actually lead to some heavy promise of third-party support on Switch 2. And speaking of third-party support, we have some updates on Call of Duty coming to Nintendo Switch 2 and also when Nintendo Switch 2 might be arriving thanks to some stuff from Microsoft. And if you've seen these headlines already, I totally get it. But I think I got some stuff I really want to get off my chest about this that you are going to be really interested in. Now, you might have noticed I've barely been making videos over the last week or so, and that is because I've been working out some nice partnership deals, and that includes nice little deals like this one, because this video is sponsored by Into the AM. Into the AM well, provides shirts just like I'm wearing. You see some of these plain basic tees right here, but also these printed tees as well. Uh, they literally make the best printed tees I've ever seen seen and using our link down below at into the am.com slash nintendo prime 10 you can get 10 percent off of your order they sell bundles they have collared shirts they have sweatshirts button-ups uh these printed tees are literally the best they are super super soft oh and they're pre-shrunk you don't believe me there's probably people down in the comments right now being able to vouch for you for how good in into the am is they have shorts sweatpants it probably makes up about 50 percent of my stuff right now. In fact, I have some new arrivals arriving tomorrow. I'll be able to show you guys some next week. So what are you waiting for? Go check out IntoTheAM.com using code NintendoPrime10 or you just use IntoTheAM.com slash NintendoPrime10 through the link in the description. Get your 10% off. Get some brand new shirts this summer and let's get into this video. Now, besides trying to work out some deals for the channel, because after all, this is my job for the moment, is I also wanted to do something else. You see, I joined this thing called the Review Crew, which we'll have more details on later, but we're gonna be reviewing video games, and one of the games that we are reviewing is Tears of the Kingdom. So of course I needed to beat that game, and that's something I spent a lot of time doing this week, about 15, 16 hours, uh, or close to half of my work week, well, not really half the work week, a little under half my work week, I uh, was spent trying to beat Tears of the Kingdom live on stream, and you see we did it. Uh, you could tell, for those who don't know, no spoilers here, but you could tell that we did it, because over here in the right-hand corner, you'll see a completion percentage, 34.75% uh, percent out of 100 is complete. I did get the actual true ending. I have all the memories and all of that. For those who don't know, uh, Nintendo did pull a a bit of a fast one, just like they did with Breath of the Wild, where there is a true ending and then a normal ending, and I got both of those, but you don't have to 100% the game to get the true ending. You just have to 100% all the memories. Uh, so yeah, that is something I did spend a fair chunk of time doing, but that's not really what we're focused on because we have a lot to talk about here. And the first thing deals with EA Sports. And I mentioned EA Sports specifically because they're the ones that have actually shown some some sort of support, at least for Nintendo Switch. We've seen some other games like It Takes Two come over that they published, but that's not a owned studio. They just own the publishing rights. Let's focus on EA Sports. Man, every time... As someone who's been playing a lot of uh, sports games over the years, every time I say EA Sports, I feel like I want to go, it's in the game, even though I don't know that it's been worthy of that phrase in a long time. But we have this article over on IGN uh, that says EA Sports FC24 Nintendo Switch will use the Frostbite engine, uh, which is really important because all the modern, well, FIFA games, this is formerly known as FIFA. They lost the FIFA license, so now they're calling it FC24, which is actually a common abbreviation used across the pond. But when we look at this, the Frostbite engine promises to bring immersive detail to the Switch version of FC24, especially when compared with the game's new playstyle technology that heightens the realism and individuality of each player. Switch players also get to fully enjoy what's easily FIFA's and now presumably FC's most popular mode in Ultimate Team, where players can develop their own teams and football legends, now including both men and women. Previous FIFA games of the Switch included just a limited version of this mode. These updates are a stark difference to ES prior treatment which got really crappy reviews 5 out of 10 4 to 10 2 out of 10 they were legacy editions they weren't very good and uh they were the best mobile version of fifa there could be but also that's because like it was just better than the fifa that was on your phone not necessarily because it was actually a good 
game. But what I find fascinating about this isn't that we're now getting the modern current version of FIFA or in this case, FC 24 as it comes over to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. It is really cool that that is happening, but that's not really what I am personally thinking here. I'm thinking they're doing this because of a renewed commitment to Nintendo's next device. Wait, why are we talking about Nintendo's next device? Well, that's because Microsoft and the FTC, that's really been the big news all week. Microsoft won. There's appeals going on. There's lots of updates. Go follow Destin on YouTube uh, if you want to get more information on He's done excellent breakdowns. He does work at IGN, but his individual YouTube channel is just fantastic. But moving beyond talking about Destin here, we have this leaked Microsoft document that alleges the Nintendo Switch successor is coming this year. There's actually, or sorry, next year, and there's actually another document that isn't a leak. It was just part of the judge's ruling, but... Anyways, we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. First, let's get through this one uh, where we have this leaked Microsoft document that alleges all of this stuff. But if we scroll down here, we'll get to the big part here. Uh, and let's see, it is right here. The potential confirmation of a 2024 Switch successor arrives via a document titled Defendants Proposed Post-Trial Findings of Fact and Conclusions of Law from the well-known legal battle between the Federal Trade Commission and Microsoft. Most of its 153-page document goes through various facts, definitions, and other details relevant to the FTC's attempt to block Microsoft from purchasing Activision Blizzard. Page 92 potentially offers a bit of insight as it reads, Nintendo is expected to release the successor to the Switch as early as next year. This detail is given in reference to the competition between Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo, stating the Switch is near the end of its life cycle, whereas the Xbox Series X, S, and PlayStation 5 are not. And here's the exact uh, document with it highlighted in there. Now, what I find interesting about all of this is obviously during this whole case, the FCTC uh, did lose also an argument they were trying to make that the Nintendo Switch is not a competitor with PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, with the judge finding that not only is the Nintendo Switch a competitor, it's a major competitor and potentially even the market leader. So, look, I know there's a lot of fan debates out there about this. What generation does it belong in? Is it really a competitor? Oh, if you have a Switch, can you really be happy just gaming on Switch, or do you also own something else? Look, guys, I don't know about you, but I've been gaming for 30 years, and I think I've always had multiple gaming devices around, whether it was an NES and a Game Boy, or later on, like a Super Nintendo and a Genesis, or after that, when I had like the N64, I also had a PC to play on. So like, I've always had multiple gaming devices, and if you think about it, now that we all have mobile phones, we technically always have at least one gaming-capable device let alone the Switch or the Xbox or the PlayStation or all of them or some of them, um, whether you have a Mac that can game or a PC that can game, a laptop. A lot of us have multiple gaming devices, so are these gaming-capable devices. So I don't really feel like that argument holds much weight, but you know what? You feel how you want to feel. A lot of this is from console wars, and I really despise console wars. I don't... I don't think uh, beyond just morbid curiosity of like, oh, who sold the most, that it really matters. And even then, that only matters to the companies, not to us gamers. That being said, it is interesting because there's another quote uh, that came from Microsoft when they were dealing with the appeal and everything, talking about Call of Duty, where they basically said Call of Duty is going to be in development for a in-development Switch device coming out in 2024. Uh, and the big thing here is talking about obviously Call of Duty starting out on the next device, skipping Switch. Uh, this was sort of something that might have been expected when that 10-year deal was signed. The interesting part is, does Microsoft actually know anything about the N Nintendo's next device? There's been a lot of inference that maybe they know nothing. But I, what I will say when we're talking about when they it, that they know nothing. There was a legal document signed by Shintura Furukawa and Phil Spencer for this 10-year deal if the sale went through. And I'm sure when negotiating that contract, there probably was a question of, hey, when is your next device coming? Because we think we're going to put Call of Duty on that, which the 10-year deal would encompass that next device anyways, right? So it's, it's a pretty fair question. And it's probably expected that while Nintendo won't give them any like details on what it is or what the specs are going to be, that 
yeah, they probably gave Microsoft an idea of a release time frame, so they knew if this purchase went through, when the contract would kick in, would they be making it for Switch or would they be making it for that next device? That would be something that Microsoft would like to know when they sign a deal like that. And while I don't think it was being held over Nintendo's head, tell us or we don't sign the deal because they wanted the deal signed because it helps them with their legal case, it wouldn't necessarily be... Uh, you know, untoward for Nintendo to have just given them an idea of a release time frame. This isn't like a commitment. We are releasing this system in 2024, but more of a, yeah, we, you probably can expect it in 2024. So then they can make their development plans around that. And obviously once this sale and this acquisition goes through at some point, there'll be some requests to Nintendo for dev units and blah, 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 blah. But the point is that it does seem that we're seeing some pretty decent commitment third party wise for Nintendo. It feels weird to say Microsoft and third party in the same sentence, but hey, we get Minecraft from them. Uh, obviously for EA, you know, we, we've gotten things like It Takes Two, but FIFA has really been the one that we get every year, even though it's kind of a crappy version of the game. Now it's FC24, which might be a better version of the game, but also, you know, well, it's not the kind of third party commitments we'd like to see. You know, if Microsoft's going to give us stuff, we'd like to see them commit to Doom and uh, Wolfenstein, like those continuing on Nintendo platforms, which we still don't know if they will. Uh, we'd love to hear that Diablo 4 or something's going to come over to the next platform. That would be really cool. But again, this is stuff that they can't talk about this when the next platform comes out anyways. They can really only talk about the thing involved in the legal case, which this Nintendo contract came up during that case. So that's why we're getting some of these little details. I do think, though, that a lot of us want to see the bigger third-party companies out there. And I know EA and Activision, those are big companies. But I mean, the ones that we really get excited about, we'd love to hear Square Enix uh, double down and say, hey, our next Final Fantasy game is going to come to that next platform instead of being PlayStation exclusive. Hey, we'd love to see Ubisoft go, hey, our next Assassin's Creed after this next one is going to end up on that new platform. We'd love to see 2K not just be like, hey, we're not only bringing NBA 2K, we've also gotten Rockstar, you know, to get taken two to go they're gonna hey rockstar you're gonna you're gonna put grand theft auto on that next system so look there's a lot of things that we would probably like to see as sort of commitments cd project red come out and make commitments but in the end those commitments can come later what i do think this does spell is that this next platform is going to have the third party support i'm not worried about nintendo's creativity they've proven with like New Horizons, and they've proven with, uh, you know, Tears of the Kingdom and Mario Wonder and and Kirby in the Forgotten Land. Like they have plenty of creativity, so they're going to continue to bring us big, ambitious, creative games at a pretty good pace. So that's we're going to have the first party, but I always worry: can the third party games step up? Because as third party games are dwindling just a little bit, so just a little bit. Uh, it, are we going to see an even bigger commitment? And finally getting EA to put the full version of FIFA on Switch, I think is them, or I'm sorry, FC24, is them really showing commitment to the, the Nintendo ecosystem because they know that what this next system is going to be and they want to be a big part on it and think there's a big potential market for them. And I obviously think Microsoft having this 10-year deal with Call of Duty, yeah, it was about you know, putting their best foot forward with all the legal arguments, but also they probably see a potential to make some actual money off a Nintendo system and putting their best foot forward there. So I am liking the future of this system before it even gets here. We already seemingly have third-party commitments, definitely Call of Duty, which should help convince other third-party games to come over. So I'm really excited for the third-party prospects of this next Nintendo system. It's something we don't often talk about. Talk about, oh, it's going to launch with a Mario game, or, oh, it's going to have this, or, oh, what are they going to do with Mario Kart and Smash? And, but what about the third parties? They're massive on Xbox and PlayStation, not seemingly as big of a deal on Nintendo, although we do get a number of really, really good ones. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's maybe get a little bit excited for the potential third-party support this next system is going to get that maybe Switch never really quite had. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And look, if you enjoyed this video and you made it this far, I would appreciate it if you drop a like and subscribe to the channel. I am trying to do YouTube full-time. I am currently a full-time YouTuber, but you guys decide how long we get to keep doing this. I didn't do this spiel at the beginning like I've done on other videos because one, it gets really old saying the same thing at the beginning of videos and then watching it not really work anyways. And two, look, we only want people that enjoy being here, being here. So if you made it this far, I assume you enjoy the content. So thank you ahead of time for probably already being a subscriber. Catch you guys in that next video.